Hello, my name is Michelle McInerney. I'm an academic in the Australian Catholic University and I'm delighted to present to you today the findings of a systematic review on behavioural interventions to treat drooling in children with neurodisability. And this will be published in the January 2019 issue of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. In terms of what we already know about this topic, we know that drooling is common in children with neurodisability and it has a significant impact on physical and social health. The behavioural interventions that are frequently recommended um, include instruction, reinforcement, prompting and self-management. And this is a non-invasive treatment approach which aims to increase target behaviours to facilitate a change in learning. So, for example, increasing the number of swallows taken to reduce drooling. In 2017, the American Academy of Cerebral Palsy and Developmental Medicine deemed the evidence to support the use of behavioural intervention to be of largely expert clinical opinion and therefore very low level evidence. Our systematic review found eight experimental studies. Seven of these were single case experimental design studies and one was an RCT. This included a total of 35 participants, 27 of whom had cerebral palsy, and they were aged between five and 17 years. Each of the studies reported a positive result with regard to drooling or drooling related behavior following intervention and seven of the eight studies used a combination of behavioural interventions rather than a single method alone. The most common type of behavioural intervention was reinforcement followed by prompting and to a lesser degree instruction, self-management, overcorrection or fading were the approaches used. Each of the eight studies targeted a um, body functions and structures level outcome Three of the studies targeted an activity level outcome and none of the studies targeted participation level outcomes or quality of life. With the eight studies that we found, there was unfortunately a high risk of bias associated with the single RCT and there was also a significant risk of bias um, with regard to each of the included SCED studies. And we used the Robbins tool by Tate et al to critique and evaluate the quality of each of these studies. There were issues with regard to both internal and external validity, and some of the internal validity issues pertain to randomization, blinding and treatment fidelity, while the external validity issues um, related to lack of systematic visual analysis and lack of a generalization measure used. We therefore concluded that there is still unfortunately insufficient evidence to inform current clinical practice when we're using behavioural interventions to reduce or eliminate drooling in children with neurodisability. In this context, then, what should clinicians do? Well, there are some learnings we can take from this systematic review. The first is that we, we need to take and obtain comprehensive baseline data when we're evaluating drooling. So identifying all the possible and contributing factors that may influence drooling and this will help us to identify appropriate treatment targets. Secondly, using treatment fidelity checklists is really important so that we can ensure that the treatment is delivered in an accurate way in the way that we originally intended. Using the freely available validated measures for drooling is also recommended such as the drooling quotient and the drooling impact scale. In terms of what researchers um, are recommended to do going forward, this research is really in its infancy and we recommend that further high quality experimental studies be conducted. The single case experimental design method or N of one trial method is particularly suitable as a study design um, as this is still phase one clinical outcome research. Again, using the validated measures that are available when we're collecting data is highly recommended. And also investigating the impact of drooling on activity and participation related outcomes and quality of life is also really important. Thank you. And if you have any further questions or queries, I'd really welcome an email 
at michelle.mcnerney at acu.edu.au. Thank you.